This is the S9 Plus that I've been using for the past five months on the daily, and it is the best Android tablet that you can buy. Ugh. Whoa, okay, maybe that's not such a good idea, but ladies and gentlemen, IP68 certification. The whole point with the build quality, and that's what I want to start off with, is that Samsung has never disappointed me with the build quality of their devices. Their phones, their tablets, their refrigerators, and their TVs are all top notch. Now, there are small things, like for example, the aluminum bezel on the last S23 Ultra was pretty trashy in my opinion, but overall, as far as the tablet is concerned, the S7, S8, and now the S9 has been absolutely phenomenal. We're talking a completely aluminum hole all the way around, which almost looks one piece. There's not a single scratch on it. And in case you're wondering, this is the case I was using. There's a keyboard inside and it actually detaches. So it's like magnet and obviously that's all wet now. But before we get into why the keyboard is so important for multitasking, and we're gonna get into multitasking in just a minute, to finish off on the build quality, being inside a case like this for most of its life, it's five months so far, it has stayed in pretty much absolutely perfect condition. But also, there's no damage on the screen either. And this is where I've been using it the most, especially with Samsung Notes. We're talking note taking like this, and I'm a pretty hard writer as well, so I really like, you know, push into this glass. There's no screen protector either, the glass has withstood my hard writing with the S Pen and that's what most of my day looks like. We're going to talk about battery as well and how that's been changing over the past few months but as far as the build is concerned there is absolutely nothing to be worried about. Now let's talk a little bit about multitasking. <laughs> So essentially we're running three apps all at once on the S9 Plus right now. I've got IKEA open on Google Chrome with a bunch of tabs. We've got Airbnb with the calendar open and I have my WhatsApp to talk with my property managers. Basically the situation is that we don't have enough sofas in our properties. And without enough sofas in our properties, we're not getting families to come over. And based on last year's data, that means we're losing $200,000 this season. And I'm running all of this on the new Samsung DeX and it's pretty snappy to be honest. Like this is me without any stutter moving Chrome with like 17 tabs, moving Airbnb all around. And of course I can open split view and pick up where I left off when it comes to opening up Chrome and have that on both ends. But right now I need all of my apps open uh, because my property manager can be messaging me at any point. And if you're wondering how I'm getting any connection out here, I'm using my phone's data. So I'm using my phone hotspot and connected that to this tablet. You can get an LTE version of the tablet as well, but that's just gonna be more expensive. I have hotspot, I have unlimited data. I might as well use that. But it's not that easy. I just don't need to find sofas that are available and in stock. I also need to get them delivered to my properties when a guest isn't there. Plus I need to get my property manager to get to my property to actually assemble the sofas. So all of that has to happen happen ASAP in 17 properties and that means 17 sofas. By the way, I also need to get a photographer to get into each of my units to take updated thumbnail pics for the Airbnb platform. That's probably the most important thing to get people to click your property. And right now I've already booked eight of them from Ikea.ca. So that's eight sofas on the way. We need just a few more. Yeah, I, I've been checking IKEA.ca, but definitely check the storage. See if any of the sofas work. We basically need a sofa bed and we need eight more of them to so see. Uh, and if he needs a little bit of, you know, persuasion, uh, just, just let me know, just send me a text first, all right? All right, thanks, Sabrina. Basically, we have a storage place in New York City where we store extra beds and mainly beds and sofas from previous properties that we're no longer putting on Airbnb. So basically, I'm gonna get a truck driver to go over to that property and see what we have in stock. But more importantly, the tablet has gone down 8% over the past 30 minutes. This is using data. This is using all of that stuff that I showed you 
percent. It's not bad. That's not gonna be enough, ladies and gentlemen, because this tablet now has to go to Orgo with me. We got class to get to. Next, we're gonna talk about the battery. We're gonna talk about the places where it's been absolutely awesome and how I've used it in my daily life, but also how the battery has fallen short in some specific circumstances that you probably need to take into account. Now, before we do that, hit the like button. Go ahead, hit the like button, and also make sure to subscribe. It really helps me out. Let's talk about the battery of the S9 Plus in two perspectives. First, as a student, but also as a business. To get started, this is Samsung Notes, and I just, I just love taking notes here. As you can see, there's a little bit of art. Huh? very nice as you can see we do support the artists on this channel of course but my point is as a student i'm using samsung notes a ton this is my go-to app this is what i'm on every single lecture class and it is one of the absolute best native note-taking experiences on any tablet and that includes the ipad pro now obviously on the ipad pro i'm not using apple notes because apple notes is garbage it's the literal definition of trash on the ipad pro i have to buy notability it's a subscription app that i pay every year to take notes on the ipad pro this is samsung notes with the white background so obviously you can have you it won't it's it's so blown out that you can't really even tell now there's two major advantages to samsung notes first of all it's super easy to import your notes into other apps for example i have notion open and the way i like to use notion is i like to organize notes that i type up and notes that i write up i want them all in one place because I'm, I'm i'm like that and i can organize all of them in notion very easily because i can import pdf files from samsung notes into Notion with like two clicks and retain the same high quality PDF. So it's like, it's very easy to read my handwriting versus on Apple Notes. If you do transfer a PDF from Apple Notes into Notion, it reduces the quality of the image so bad that everything looks pixelated. Number two, it's super easy to share a file from Samsung Notes and submit the file to your professor. So for example, if I'm doing homework and I finish up my homework assignment on my tablet, which is what I do a ton because it's super easy, I can share directly from Samsung Notes into Canvas and be done. Now number two, let's talk a little bit more about the battery because I know I said I was gonna talk about the battery. By the time I get home from class, all day I've, I've been taking notes, the lecture, I've gone to lunch and maybe watched some YouTube, did a little bit of split screen, you know, did all of that stuff. I still have, at the end of the day, by the time I get home, like 20 to 30% left easily. What that means is I can get home and, you know, relax. I don't need to run to a charger and charge up my tablet. I can put the load down, you know, put some tuna on the stove or something like that, you know, get some going, uh, sit down and enjoy some media, enjoy YouTube comfortably, not worrying about the battery of the device because this does hold charge really, really well. Now let's talk about a downside. One of the major disadvantages, maybe perhaps to this tablet, which is very, very unfortunate to be honest. If you do zoom, that's where you're gonna notice a little bit of battery drain. And when I say a little bit, ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking some major battery drainage. Part of the reason is because of these phenomenal front-facing cameras, but they do use up quite a bit of your charge. So what I'm talking about is one of the longest Zoom conferences I've ever had in my life was almost two hours. It was a little under two hours. We're talking like one hour, 50 minutes. And during this whole Zoom call, I was with, I was sitting there with my camera on. So the front facing camera was on and everyone's front facing cameras was on. Now, if I had about a hundred percent charge at the start of that Zoom conference, at the end, I was down to literally 50% in less than two hours. That is not good. Now, does that mean anything to you if you're doing YouTube? No. If you're doing WhatsApp, absolutely not. None of this has nothing to do with any of those other apps. So if you're watching YouTube for two hours, you should not notice, and I haven't noticed, 50% battery drain. Now, it might also be a similar kind of battery drain if you're doing gaming. So if you run games for like two hours or something like that on this, you know, you're running Genshin Impact on your tablet for that long, you might notice some kind of battery drain like that. But overall, for most people, for most of your everyday usage, you're not going to have to worry about the battery. And that's been that way for the past five months. Coming up to the end of this review, there's a few points that I absolutely cannot leave out. After five months of usage, these are things that I noticed and that I either loved or hated. First of all, the cameras. No one's using these cameras. 
If you go to a movie theater, you go to the AMC and you want to pirate a video, you want to, you know, take it under key, obviously never do something like that, but get yourself something small. You know, get yourself an action cam. You don't, don't ruin the experience for everybody behind you, you know? So please don't record videos illegally on any device, obviously, but don't, like, don't, don't do that. Don't do this with, with, with a tablet. It's, it's stupid. You take out your phone, man. More importantly, these interfacing cameras, this is what I want to talk about. These are phenomenal. They don't have all of those gimmicks that Apple is coming out with. And I'm talking about the facial track, okay? I'm talking about when you walk around the kitchen because you're cooking obviously with your Apple iPad Pro and you're cooking apples, obviously for Apple people, that may be an undertaking. I didn't say that. But as, as far as those features are concerned on Apple, we're not getting all of that on this, but what it does do well are the fundamentals. And for me, that's what I care about basically the most so making my skin look good not showing off the pores in 4k and just if I want to show the background I can show the background or I can blur the back obviously that's a zoom feature and that's where I've mainly used these cameras and I also want to talk about the speakers okay look the speakers are good this is something I may have talked about when I was talking about the displays look you come home you're, you're relaxing you're watching some sort of media it might be YouTube it might be K drama it might be P drama whatever it is that's happening on the tablet you're watching it and you're enjoying it through these speakers. Guys, did you hit the like button? Hmm? Did you hit that like? I'm saying, um, maybe you want to go ahead and hit the like button. Just, just, just go ahead and do it. All right. Until next time. Take it easy.